Well, good morning. Good to see you all uh, here this morning. As expected, we thought numbers would be down a bit. There was a, a great wedding yesterday, great day yesterday, and a, a lot of ones have stayed over. And maybe they're joining us online this morning. Uh, hopefully, uh, they are. So, uh, but it's good to see, good to see you all here this morning. Uh, we appreciate uh, you coming. I know it's coming towards the end of the summer as well. And although next weekend's bank holiday weekend, people are still. Uh, making the most of it and uh, before the, the, the autumn all comes in but uh, we're going to make a start uh, this morning as we uh, sing from the screen remember we wear our masks as we sing but we're going to start with a beautiful song king of kings majesty god of heaven living in me gentle savior closest friend strong deliverer beginning and, and then following this i pray and then after that george will bring all the necessary <laughs> King of Kings, not wonderful today because we look at the world situation, don't we? And we think of Afghanistan in particular and all that's been happening there. But isn't it lovely to know today that Jesus Christ reigns over all? It might look at times that things are out of control, but yet what a truth to know that He's in control of all things. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Let's continue to worship Him and let's commend our time unto the Lord. Almighty God, as we bow before you this morning, we just come to or we come to praise you and to worship you for the great privilege that we can do so. We come acknowledging today who you are, King of Kings, Majesty. And we rejoice today, our Father, for those of us who are saved, that, that we can uh, praise you that it's, it's God of heaven living in me. You live in glory, you live in heaven, but yet, Lord, we thank you that by your Holy Spirit, that from the moment, our God, we put our trust in you, for all of us who are saved, that you came to live within our hearts and lives as well. And we rejoice, our Father, that we uh, can worship you. We rejoice, our Father, in all the blessings that you bestow upon us. We rejoice, our Father, in the very fact that we are the children of God, redeemed, our Father, not with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but with the precious shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for his a great victory as he rose in triumph from the grave. We rejoice today that the, that the Lord Jesus Christ, that he, he lives in the power of an endless life, that he reigns over all. 
And Father, as we look at today's world, and we think particularly of all the scenes that we've seen on the news over this past week, as we think of Afghanistan, and all that's going on there, Father, we we thank you, Lord God, that you still are sovereign. And we do pray for that country. We do pray, Father, for the believers in that country. We ask, our God, your hand of protection will be upon them. And Father, we've already been hearing of how, Lord God, they just long to be a continual witness there for you. And yet, Father, we are hearing as well that they're under great persecution and there are those who have even lost their lives, our Father, for the cause of the gospel. We do pray, Father, that you will bless in that country. We pray that you will bless in the whole world situation. We think even of the COVID situation as it continues, our Father, and even locally, our Father, how it's been affecting. And we do pray again, our God, for help in these days. We pray, Father, that that uh, Lord as we know as we see scripture being fulfilled that these will be days Lord when people would turn to you for salvation that people of God would cry out to you for mercy that people Lord God would realize our father the, uh, the, 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 the seriousness um, of their need of salvation and that they would turn to the living saviour bless us here today thank you for your good hand upon us thank you father for all that are gathered in Bless our fellowship together. Bless our Father, your word to our hearts today. We pray, O God, that you'll speak to each one of us. We pray, Father, that you will minister afresh to us as we start out into another week, our Father. We ask, our God, that we would hear the voice of God through your word. We pray that our worship will be acceptable in your sight, that we indeed would worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, we pray that you will cleanse us afresh from all sin so that Father, there's nothing in our lives that is, uh, is marring that uh, sweet fellowship with yourself or holding back the blessing of God Almighty. Be with us all. Be with those, our Father, who cannot be with us, perhaps watching online. We pray, Father, for those who are unwell. Again, we commend them to you, Lord, collectively, and ask our God that you will give help to them, and Lord, that they would experience your help and your hope, Lord, within their uh, their trying circumstances in these days. For those are Father and holiday, refresh them and bless them. And Father, for those as well, our God, who uh, maybe who have grown cold in heart, we ask our Father that you will uh, just uh, rekindle, Lord, uh, that their love for you, and Lord, that they have that desire to walk with you. Thank you for your blessings uh, throughout this week, for your blessings of yesterday, for Mark and for Sarah, uh, as they we're married here in the church, Lord, and we pray your blessing upon them as they start out in married life. And I ask our Father that, that the very uh, head of it all, Lord, will be the Lord Jesus Christ, and he will be uh, exalted in their lives. But Father, we commend all to you. Bless our time. And Father, we just ask that whenever we leave here, we leave here knowing that we have met with our God. And then for the, the picnic uh, a little later on as well, the weather will be favourable. And again, Lord, it'll be a sweet time of fellowship together, and we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, George. Well, I'd like to give you all a very warm welcome uh, to our sheriff's today. It's good to see you no more. Yeah, I'd like to speak to folks that uh, are away on holidays and are staying over after the wedding. I trust they're getting tuned in this morning down at Corrick as well. Uh, those, those folks who are staying there, the folks who are in the hall, uh, we bid you all warmly welcome at your service today. The announcements uh, for the coming week are as follows as the pastor has already animated. The morning service will be followed by a church picnic at the Manor, so you can make your way there. Um, and remember, please, the car park is full of so that's provided that machine's working. Uh, as you go on, it wasn't working the last day we were there, so we look forward to that. I think the weather forecast is to pick up this to be no rain uh, this afternoon. Wednesday. Wednesday at 8, our prayer meeting and Bible study, please remember that. Then the service next Sunday, the usual time at 11 o'clock, when Pastor Alan will be speaking at that, uh, God willing. And then the family, a training day for all involved in children and youth work. That will be on Wednesday the 1st of September, so if you remember that please, Wednesday the 1st of September, a training day for all, a training meeting for all involved in children and this work. And then, just to give you a wee bit of warning about what's happening from the start of the winter's work, we're planning to get back to 
some sort of holiday at the beginning of September. So Sunday the 5th of September and Sunday fortnight, we plan to restart Sunday school uh, and the evening service. So we're looking forward to that and get back to some sort of normal thing. What will happen with the evening service will be from 11 to 11.45, so it will be a wee bit shorter. Uh, that's to accommodate the boys and girls to a bit of Sunday school during the whole time of the church. So Sunday school will be on from 11 to 11.45 uh, with the classes. And we will meet here in the church for the church service as with starting the first of uh, September. And we're planning, uh, or willing to have some evening service we commence at 6 o'clock that same day. And then finally, just this August and September Baptist magazines, there's still a number from that reports there. If you haven't got your copy yet, please do lift it on the way out this morning. Thank you. Thank you, George. Well, boys and girls, again, great to see you uh, here this morning. We want to uh, turn to God's words. As George was saying there, in, in a fortnight's time, you'll be starting back, uh, God willing, into Sunday school. And uh, well, really what we've been doing in all of these talks on Sunday mornings is working through, uh, really, the Sunday school books. And uh, we, we've been in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. In, in recent weeks and um, really we finish that off then next week and then there will be new Sunday school books uh, that will be in uh, for the Sunday school teachers uh, and you'll be able to, to spend more time working in them and, and again uh, you will, you'll be able to do the, the worksheets. I trust you've got the worksheets this morning, no less like and had that all sorted out for everybody this morning. Um, Mark chapter 10, uh, if you have your Bible, uh, do turn to that. Mark chapter 10, verse 17. We're not going to read all of these verses. Um, this is a story I know we've done in the past as well, um, but we want to look at it afresh this morning. In your worksheets, we'll be tying in exactly uh, with this uh, this morning. Mark 10, verse 17. It says, as Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, do not defraud, honour your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle uh, than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Boys and girls, I wonder how good you are at running. I, I wonder, well, I, I don't know if it's school um, back before the, the summer months. Sorry to mention school because I know some are maybe back to school this week. Some are maybe starting school. Um, I know some aren't back until maybe the week after. But I, I know that with, with COVID and everything, there wasn't all the, <coughs> excuse me, there wasn't all the, the normal sports days. Maybe your school was able to have a sports day. I wonder. Um, have you ever run a, a, won a race in sports day? I, I trust this morning that you're, you're good at running. I don't know if you've ever seen these photos, but I wonder if you ever run whenever you maybe hear that you're going to see a good friend. Maybe somebody you haven't seen for a long time, maybe even whenever it was COVID. And whenever COVID was, uh, well, I'm just saying when COVID was over, it's still here, but when, whenever schools, you know, you had been out, for, out of school for some time, you go back to school again, or they announced you were going back to school, maybe that first day you were back in school, 
and you saw somebody across the playground that you hadn't seen for some time and you just ran and they ran towards you and you were so, so glad to see them. Or maybe boys and girls has been something else. Maybe you've heard about somebody famous, maybe uh, in Tuggermoor, and come to visit Tuggermoor or Macara, Macrafelt or wherever, and you, you were able to run and see them. And boys and girls, the reason I mention that is because whenever we read here in, in, in Mark chapter 10, it says here about a man, he was known as the rich young ruler, and he ran to see Jesus. He ran to see Jesus. You see that in verse 17. Of how he ran to see Jesus. He had obviously heard about how great Jesus was. How great his teaching was. But probably he was more interested in the very fact that Jesus was healing people. And Jesus said was making the sick better. And he wanted to see Jesus. We don't know how far away he was. Whenever he heard that Jesus had come this way. And he ran. And I can imagine he ran through a crowd of people and he ran right to the very feet of the Lord Jesus Christ because he had a really important question. His important question was this, when he got to Jesus was, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now he obviously knew that one day we're going to die. Whenever we die, we're either going to be in heaven or we're going to be in hell. And boys and girls, eternal life is... Is about spending it with God. And he wanted to know what he could do to get to heaven. And isn't that a great question? That's a great thing to be able to, we should be asking, what is it we, what can we do to be in, be in heaven? And what we know is the Lord Jesus said, and he says, well, he says, you know the commandments. Do not murder, do not steal, do not commit adultery, do, do not give false testimony. That is, don't tell lies. Or, or, or don't, uh, don't do fraud, that is, don't uh, steal from people and honour your father and your mother. And boys and girls, whenever this young ruler, he heard this, rich young ruler, he heard this, he said, he said, Master, he says, all these things I've kept since I was a boy. How many of us could say that, those of us who are older, that we've kept all of these since we were a boy. But then, when Jesus heard that, Jesus said, well, there's one more thing. He says, see all that you want, Go and sell it and give it to the poor. The man was really disappointed. Really disappointed. He had to go and sell it. Imagine, imagine, boys and girls, everything that you own. Think of everything that's in your bedroom. Or think of everything if you have a, a playroom or something like that. Or think of your think of your iPad. Imagine if you had to sell that to be in heaven. I wonder how you would feel. Uh, you may be thinking, I couldn't do that. Maybe your, your, your bicycle or whatever it is outside, and, and you had to sell it all and give all the money away to the poor. You're going to be left with absolutely no money. You'd be, maybe you'd be thinking, I could never do that. But boys and girls, sometimes people have thought, well, is that what I have to do so that I can be in heaven? No, it's not. The reason Jesus mentioned this was because this is what meant more to this man than anything else. The things that he owned. Maybe he, had a, maybe he had a big fancy house. Fancier than everybody else. I was going to say maybe he had a big fancy car. But whatever it was in those days. Maybe he had the best horses and camels. And chariots. And all those things to get him about. Maybe say he had the best in the, in the land. And Jesus knew that those things meant more to that man than anything else. And that's why Jesus said, go and sell these things and give to the poor. You see, he wasn't prepared to give up what meant most to him, to follow Jesus. And that's what eternal life is, is saying, saying no to the things of the world, giving them up, and making sure that Jesus Christ is first in our hearts and lives. And boys and girls say, whenever the, the, the rich young ruler heard all this, he was so disappointed. What we're told is, he went away very, very sad. The sad thing is he wasn't prepared to give it up. And boys and girls, the disciples, they thought all this was strange. And they said, well, who then, who then can he, can he inherit eternal life? Because Jesus said that it's, that, that it's impossible for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. That is, unless they give up their riches. And it's the same for all of us. It might not be riches. It might be something else. It might be some particular sin. 
maybe we're not prepared to give up to follow the Lord Jesus. What we know is the Lord Jesus said it's easier for a camel to enter through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich person to be saved. And the disciples thought, well, can anybody be saved? But then what we know is Jesus said with, 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 with God, all things are possible. And today, if you're not saved, the wonderful thing is this, you can be saved. You can be saved. You can have eternal life today. You can inherit eternal life today. If you turn from your sin, you give up whatever it is means most to you in life. And you follow the Lord Jesus Christ all of your days. Isn't it great news today that there is eternal life? But today, the question is, are you trusting in Jesus? Or is it you prefer, you prefer something from this world more than Jesus? Do you not see that the things of this world will only last for the time of this world? Whereas having Jesus in your heart and life is for all of eternity. I trust today we're all following him and we're loving the Lord Jesus Christ with all of our hearts. So you have the worksheets there, boys and girls. You can conf uh, can fill those in now uh, for the, the, the rest of the service. I'm sure there's sweets again in those packs and you'll be able to enjoy them as well. I'm going to ask the worship group again to come to lead us uh, in our second song. My heart is filled with thankfulness to him who bore my pain. Thank you. Let's all stand. Because 
when I see what some people have brought in previous picnics, there, there'll be plenty for everybody, so there will. So you, you'll, you'll not go hungry. Um, we'd just love to have you uh, come. And uh, picnics are great because people get to connect with each other, reconnect with each other with the whole COVID situation, and it's a great way for people to get to know people, to get to know each other. We uh, sometimes we don't know everybody in the church, and the picnics are always a great way to do that. So hopefully you, get, you can join with us. Uh, today. Uh, George also mentioned Wednesday week, the 1st of September, training evening for everybody and we're asking that everybody who's involved with children's work and youth work, Sunday school teachers, Friday club leaders, BYF leaders, all the different departments um, that you come along. There is a, a book we would ask as well, if possible you read this book, it says more a booklet than, than, than a book and they're out in the ports, they're free of charge for you and they are a simple read. Um, and it's simply entitled Amazing with God, Winning the Next Generation for Christ. And uh, we're going to really sort of be going through that on the training evening well, and, and a number of other things as well, really, as we gear ourselves up for the, 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 the autumn, winter work, God willing, that will all be starting back again. So if you haven't got your copy of this book, uh, they are out in the porch and there's some out uh, as well in the hallways you go into the hall there. Please take it. I do read it. It is, it is a simple read. Maybe you're saying, well, I'm not a reader. Um, it, it is a simple read, uh, yet I believe there's so much in it that is, is, uh, is really helpful for us, uh, really, as we uh, look forward to the winter work. But if you please keep the Wednesday the first, be, it will not be a normal midweek meeting Wednesday the first. So we'll say it again next week. Um, but uh, so if you are involved, please plan to come along. Luke chapter 17, say this morning, in verse 11. Again, we're, we're, we're reading uh, familiar verses, um, but yet I believe uh, teaching us great lessons, really, with regards to uh, our Christian lives. And a great challenge as well in the Gospel as we look at these verses this morning. Luke, uh, Luke 17, verse 11. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as Jesus entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And it's in verse 17, we have that burning question that Jesus asked, Were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? It was way back in 1860 that I was, uh, that I came across the story that, that it was a cold wintry day and um, a crowded passenger steamer um, really uh, I found it off the shores of Lake Michigan. But while others stood by, a man with the name of Edward Spencer, he, he threw off his coat, he swam out through the heavy icy water 16 times. And in doing so, he succeeded in rescuing 17 people. But this all took its toll on him. And after collapsing in the delirium of exhaustion, uh, he, he never completely recovered from that day's exposure and, and really lived the rest of his life in broken health. But yet people would say that the real tragedy of the story actually is this. In a notice of his death, one paper said that not one of those 17 rescued persons ever thanked him for what he did for them. And right now I ask the question, well why is this? Or why was this? How hard is it really to say thank you to someone else who has been who has been good to us, and especially if somebody has saved our life. There, this response of the 17 people, it really a beggar's belief, and, 
And what we see here in Luke chapter 17, and these verses that we have read this morning, is a similar situation, but yet it is one that is not just quite as bad, because what we have is one person out of ten who returns back to the Lord Jesus Christ to give thanks to him. And in giving, or in saying this, it's the question that Jesus asked here in verse 17, is it not, that, that really rings loud and clear from this episode, and is one that we're surely challenged today, especially whenever we think of what the Lord has done for us, for those of us particularly who are saved. Is it not that it's a challenge to us as to whether today we are a thankful people, or is it that maybe what, it, what could be said about us is that actually we are a thankless people. What, challenge, what a challenge is this question where Jesus said to the one that returned, he said, where there are not ten claims, but where are the nine? Five things I want you to note with me here this morning as we look at this. I want you to note, first of all, as we said it really all in this context, I want you to note, first of all, the request. The request. Now, the words isolation or self-isolating are, are, are words that, that probably have been used more over the past 18 months, I would say, than the, than the previous 18 years combined. It has been the experience of many as they have contracted COVID, and some of you here indeed have been in that very position, or, or been in touch with somebody who has tested positive for COVID, I remember originally it was you had to, you had to isolate or self-isolate, quarantine yourself for 14 days. And then it was brought down to 10 days, which when the completion of the, the 10 days, I think for many people, it couldn't come quick enough. Really, it was nothing compared to those who had leprosy back in the days of the Bible. Look again here at verses 11 to 13 of, of Luke chapter 17. It says, And it came to pass, as Jesus went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. What we see here is that the ten lepers, uh, and I highlighted there really as a reading, that they stood afar off. Really, that's isolation. Um, I was going to say self-isolation, but not really, because self-isolation, for anybody who's had to do it, you're in the room, all in your own. Maybe your food was left at the door. Um, whoever lived in the house with you, they, they, they weren't prepared to come into the room. Uh, you had to uh, really live on your own for the 14 days or for the, for the 10 days. But what we see here is that these, uh, uh, that what we have is a group of ten men who were together, but yet they had to keep their distance from all who didn't have leprosy. Again, what you see here is, is, is well, it's not self-distancing because there was ten of them. But you, you understand what I'm saying. And, and, and this is the way that these men had to live their lives. As if it wasn't bad enough that they had to to, to uh, isolate, to be separate from everybody else. These men also had to live with the knowledge that there was no, no one cure for it. There are some people who have gone through similar with COVID, and yet I'm sure they always, uh, they always hope, uh, particularly people who have been in ICU, they've always hoped that they would be able to get out of it. Because obviously there were ventilators and there was all the modern day medication. But back in, the, back in the days of the Lord Jesus Christ, when he came to leprosy, there was absolutely no no one cure for it. That is until Jesus Christ came their way. They obviously had heard that Jesus Christ was the great physician. That he was the one who was healing people of every disease, illness, an infection known at this time. There's no wonder that they did what we see here in verse 13 where it says, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. What we see is they recognized his position when they called him Master. But they obviously believed that the Lord Jesus Christ could do something for them whenever they said, have mercy on, on us. And, and, and the great truth of all of this is that whenever there's nothing else or no one else to help us, Praise God, there's still Jesus Christ. 
You see, that's the great teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ today, is it not? Whenever there's nothing or no one else, we've still got Jesus Christ. And so many people have been blessed as the Lord Jesus Christ has, has worked in their circumstances. And yet, what I also see in this is a beautiful picture of the gospel of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ dealing with sin. But he's the only one who was able to deal with it. Because what we know, and we'll see this as we make our way through these verses, is that Jesus Christ was the only one who was able to deal with leprosy. And leprosy, we know, is a picture of sin, sin within our hearts and lives. And we know that many people have try all sorts of things to get rid of the sin in their hearts and lives. But the truth of the gospel is that it's only Jesus Christ that can deal with our sin. It's only Jesus Christ that can heal us of our sin. It's only Jesus Christ that can cleanse us from all of our sin. We can try everything else in the world. And that's what so many people are doing. So many people, in fact, are trying religion. But it's a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's the only thing that will cleanse us from all sin. Religion will never cleanse anyone from sin. It might make us feel better within ourselves for a while. But it doesn't deal with the sin problem. It doesn't deal with the sin issue. And today if you're somebody and you're, you're trusting in religion to get you into heaven, understand today you will never make it to heaven. You will never be in heaven. The Bible never says that it's religion. It will save you from your sin. The Bible makes it so very clear that it's only Jesus Christ. I can save you from all sin. And the wonderful message of the gospel today is that he is still able to save from sin. And he can save you today. He can give to you eternal life. And as it would it be today? And I trust today that you would be like the rich young ruler in the sense that you'd be asking, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Are you prepared to give up everything that this word offers? Come and put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Surrender your life unto him, confessing your sin before him, thanking him that he died on the cross for your sins and ask him to cleanse you from all sin. The wonderful truth is the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. It's only by you putting your trust in him that you can be saved. So we see, first of all, the request. Oh, today that you be crying out, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. These men were crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. But then we move on secondly, and I want you to note uh, the, the recovery. The recovery in verse 14 uh, of, of Luke 17. It says, when he saw them, that's when Jesus saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. You see, this is why we who are saved pray. This is why we ought to pray even whenever a situation looks impossible. Because for these men, the situation, up until the Lord Jesus Christ came their way, it looked impossible. Maybe they had run to doctors. Maybe they had run to physicians. Maybe they had spent all that they had trying to get something to heal them of their leprosy. But what we see here is that whenever the Lord Jesus Christ came their way and they looked to him, they obeyed him. And you see, that's the, the importance of the gospel, obeying what Jesus says about the gospel. Jesus says, repent and be saved. Yeah, that was the very first word that was recorded in the, in the, in the gospels of Jesus' ministry here on earth. The very first word that he used was repent. That is, turn from your sin and turn to follow him. We must obey what he says. So many people are obeying what others are saying. They say, oh, you need to read your Bible more. It's good to do that. Keep doing it. But it will not save you. They'll say to go to church. Or they'll say you need to stop the alcohol. Or you need to stop this particular, that particular sin in your life. It's good that you do that. But it will not save you. It's following the Lord Jesus Christ as you turn from your life of sin. The ten lepers, they cried out to, to, to the Saviour for help. And being obedient, they, they were healed immediately. What an experience it must have been for them. I, I don't know that photograph uh, or that 
picture uh, depicts really what it would have been like for them. Can you imagine what it, uh, we don't know how long they had been together with their leprosy. They, they, these ten men had maybe been for years. Uh, and they had no contact with anybody else. They always had to uh, socially distance. They couldn't go near anybody. As they went down the street, they had to shout out the words, unclean, unclean. Imagine trying to uh, live in that life. You couldn't go to the social events that were on in the neighborhood. Couldn't go to work. They couldn't get together with their families. They couldn't do what everybody else in society was doing. And this was the way that they were living their lives, saying they were socially distancing all the time. But can you imagine that as they as they heard the words of the Jesus of, of the Savior, go, go to the priest and you'll be cleansed, that as they as they started to make their way there, that all of a sudden that, 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 that they would have maybe felt their, 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 their arm being transformed as the leprosy was, was being removed from them. And then and, and maybe then they started to live all over their body. I'm sure there was great joy. I'm sure as they looked at each other. Because they all would have felt the same pain whenever they were in their leprosy. And, 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 and whenever they were suffering from it, they all would have felt each other's pain. And I'm sure there was great joy then as they, as they, as they looked at the others and suddenly saw the leprosy was gone. How wonderful is what the Lord Jesus Christ is able to do in a sinner's heart. How wonderful is what he can do in any situation. I love the words of Hebrews 13 and verse 8. It says this, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's unchanging. But a theologian has called the immutability of the Lord Jesus Christ, the unchanging Christ. That what he was able to do yesterday, he's able to do today, and he's able to do forever. And the, up, the application is, is, is obvious, isn't it? Why, now, why he doesn't heal everybody, I, I don't understand. There's so much we'll not understand until we get to glory. But praise God, today he still has the power to heal from the worst sickness, the worst disease that is ever presented before him. Is that how we see the Lord Jesus Christ today? Whenever we hear of a great need, is that what goes through our minds? That we have one who is able to work in that situation. Maybe whenever you're in work and maybe you're, you're hearing a work colleague talking about somebody maybe in their family who's been, who's been diagnosed with cancer or they've had a terrible accident and it's looking as though uh, they're, they're never going to be the same again. Are you able, do you have the confidence, do you, do you, do you present Christ to them and say, I'm going to pray? I'm going to pray because I believe that with Jesus all things are possible. That's who our Saviour is. That's why we ought to be a praying people and ought to be bringing the prayers and the supplications of our heart unto the Lord. We see here the request, we see the recovery. Notice thirdly, the return. The return. Well, we see this in verses 15 and 16, but... Rudyard Kipling is somebody that uh, I'm sure many of us, if not all of us, have heard of. He uh, was one of the most successful writers in history. As a result, he made a great deal of money from his books. A reporter once came to him and he said this. He said, Mr. Kipling, I've heard that somebody calculated, calculated that the money you make from your books comes out to over $100 a word. He said to Mr. Kipling, he says, here's a hundred dollars, now give me one of your hundred dollar words. Kipling folded the hundred dollar note, put it in his pocket, and he says, okay, he says, I'll give you one. Thanks. He got that hundred dollar note, he was very happy. But what is it we read here in Luke 17, verses 15 and 16? One of them, one of them, when he saw that he was he, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. The most unexpected one of the ten, what we see here is actually was the one who returned to the Lord Jesus Christ to say thank you. It was a Samaritan. 
That, that's what it, it, it highlights here in the text. One of them, when he saw that he was, he turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And then at the end of verse 16, it says, and he was a Samaritan. Now, we know about the history between the Jews and the Samaritans. The understanding of the text here is that the other nine were Jews. People that you would have expected to, to, to come back to the Lord Jesus Christ to give thanks. But yet we see that none of them, not one of them came to give thanks. And we know that many times. And we know there was a great hatred amongst the Jews towards the Samaritans. And what the Lord Jesus Christ often did was he worked in situations to teach the Jews great lessons about the, about, about the Samaritans. And about loving the Samaritans. About the, how the Samaritans can have his wonderful salvation as well. That's what we see here, really, in this, this text. Whenever it comes to God blessing us and doing something most amazing and miraculous for us, I wonder today, are we like the, uh, the, the Hebrew Samaritan? I believe that's the obvious application of this, of, of this passage. Are we today a thankful people? Or would it be today that we are a thankless people? That God has blessed us with so many blessings, that God has done so much for us, but yet are we a people who take time each day to thank God for all of his goodness towards us? Or is it that we're just a people that really whenever we think of prayer, whenever we think of Jesus, all we're thinking is, well, he's somebody that I'm going to come as it were to with my shopping list. And I'm going to ask him for this. I'm going to ask him for that. I'm going to ask him for the other thing. And all he ever hears from us is, God, give me this. Give me that. Lord, work in this situation. Work in that situation. But never does he hear us coming back and saying, God, thank you. For all of your goodness towards me. I love it. I, one commentator describes what happened. He says this. He says, he had been loud in prayer. That's what you see in, in, in verse 13. It says, they, they lifted up their voices uh, and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy upon us. He had been loud in prayer, so now he is loud in praise. His impurity had kept him at a distance from Christ, but now that he is cleansed, he falls at the Saviour's feet. When did we last fall at the Saviour's feet in praise? For all of his goodness towards us. Psalm 107, and saying there's many psalms I could quote this morning. I'm sure you have favourite psalms, psalms of praise. Psalm 107 is a great psalm to meditate upon whenever, whenever, you're, all, whenever you're up against it in life. It's a psalm that, that speaks of God's great deliverance for his people. And, and four times the psalmist says in the psalm, he says, Oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness. And for his wonderful works to the children of men. Four times, verses 8, 15, 21, and 31. That's what he keeps saying. Oh, that men, that's all of us, would praise the Lord for his goodness. And for his wonderful works to the children of men. Are we a praising people today? Are we a thankful people today? Or is it that maybe we're a grumbling people? Complaining about everything. Complaining we never get enough. Complaining we never get what other people get. Complaining that we, uh, that, 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 that we get life harder than, than seemingly harder than, than, than everybody else. But yet if we stop and think about it, what we see is the goodness of God. In so, so many ways. The request, the recovery, the return. Really leading on from the return, what you have then is the rebuke. The rebuke. Came across the story of a medical missionary who, who worked in, in India for many years. He served in a region where people had cases of what is called progressive blindness. People would be born with normal eyesight, but eventually they would lose their eyesight completely as they grew older. The missionary, he developed a treatment that actually worked and stopped the problem. People therefore would come to him, and after he performed the treatment, they they, they, they would realize that their sight had been saved and that they had been healed. But the amazing thing is, it's a bit like the story I was telling you at the start. Remember the man who rescued the 17 people, not one said thanks. This missionary, not once did he ever hear anybody say thank you for healing their eyesight. But yet there was a reason for it on this occasion. The phrase, you see, 
thank you so much or thank you very much, it was not in their dialect. They, they, there were no words for it. Instead, what they did was they, 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 they spoke a word that simply meant, I will tell your name. And wherever they went, they would tell the name of the missionary who had cured them. And really that was their way of being appreciative, of being thankful for, for, for what the missionary had done for them. We have a language, don't we, in the dialect that has thank you. That has the word thank you so much. And, and, and yet how sad that maybe at times we don't come and say thank you. The Jews, they had, they had the word thank you uh, in their language. And yet, how sad that nine of them, they didn't return to say thank you to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because what is it that Jesus said? Where there are not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Couldn't even come and say thank you. Their lives have been totally transformed in, in, in a moment, in an instant. Remember, they were living really as, as slaves. They were living as the outcasts of society. But yet, within a moment, their lives were totally transformed. Whenever I read this, and whenever I read this question that Jesus asked, I, 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 I feel a sense of disappointment in the Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder if God is disappointed with us today because maybe we don't return give thanks unto him. Oh yes, whenever there's a great need, we can be very quick to have a special time of prayer. But whenever we but whenever we see an answer to our prayers, how slow we can be to have that special time of praise. And I think that's something we all churches are guilty of it, as a people of God. Whenever there's a need, but we're very quick to organize that special time of prayer. But when did we ever last attend a special time of praise? A time where we saw God answer prayer, and indeed God answers prayer all the time, and He's so good to us. The wonderful thing about God is this actually, He does so much for us that we never even ask or think about. Think of all the blessings that we have every day. How many of us today ask God uh, that, that He would give us clothes to be wearing today? We, we probably haven't done that. We know that He has promised that we seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All these things will be added onto us. How many of us sat down and said, God, I need food for tomorrow? We probably haven't done that. Safety is we've traveled. Having a job to go to. And God's given us all these things and so, so many other things. He's pouring them in on abundance on us. But yet are we a people who come and give thanks for his abundant goodness. Philippians 4 and verse 6 it says, Be careful or be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God. I think one of the greatest things that we can do whenever we come to prayer is just at the very start take time in thanksgiving and praise. Not just coming with our, with our list of requests, but coming with thanksgiving and taking that time just to focus upon God and upon His greatness and focus upon His blessings that He bestows upon us day by day. Even stop to think of, maybe if, you're, if, you're, if, if it's in the morning time, you're doing your quiet time, stop to think of the blessings that God gave you the day before, blessings that you never even actually asked Him for. Because there's so many, I can guarantee you, we say thank you. We take time to praise Him, to worship Him. Thank you is in our language as well. Let's be a people of praise unto God. We see the recovery, so the request, the recovery, the return, the rebuke. And then what you see finally, hopefully it'll come up, Leonard has I've lost a signal somewhere. The regeneration. The regeneration. What is it many people say they will do if Jesus heals in, in answer to prayer? What is it many people say that if they see the Lord Jesus Christ doing a miracle for them, particularly people who are not saved or, or people who who, who maybe attend church occasionally, what they often say is this, they will follow him. 
that they will be saved by him. Many people have said that. Or they've even come to the Lord Jesus in prayer and they said, Lord, I, I, I have this great need. I, I know I, I, I never come to you. I know I never acknowledge your life. But if you work in this one situation, I will follow you. I, I, I will be saved. But yet, sadly, too many that never even return to give thanks, let alone be saved. I think this story is a clear picture of of reality. It's all too often in today's word that not returning to Jesus. You see, what we see then is that the nine actually missed out on an even greater blessing which only one man received. What is it we read in verse 17? Or say verse uh, verse 19. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Scholars believe that it's talking clearly that this man was saved, saved from his sin. The nine, the other nine, they were only interested in having physical healing. But whenever this man came back to the Lord Jesus Christ, what he received was spiritual healing. Warren Wearsby, he says this, he says, while it is wonderful to experience the miracle of physical healing, it is even more wonderful to experience the miracle of eternal salvation. And isn't that true? Yes, whenever we get unwell or whenever we're diagnosed with an illness, we want to be healed. But yet, isn't the greatest blessing of all knowing that our soul is saved? That our soul is right for all of eternity. That, oh, yes, that even though, you see, we couldn't get healed. But then there's every other possibility that we could die or be killed shortly afterwards right into the great eternity. That healing that we got physically, it might have given us a few weeks, it might have given us a few years, but isn't it wonderful to know that we have the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, that for all of eternity we're able to say it is well, it is well with my soul. Are you able to say that today? Are you able to sing that? Because that's what we're going to sing now in our closing hymn. When peace like a river, attendeth my way, when ask the worship that they come and lead us in this. When peace like a river, attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea, billows roll. Whatever my Lord you have taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Praise God that he's able to heal us from all physical ailments. And praise God that he's able to cleanse us from all sin. Give unto us eternal life, and that we know that forever this is true. It is well, it is well with my soul. Let's stand and we'll sing our closing hymn. Thank you.
Christian friend and say they can't see you. Only Jesus Christ can. Maybe you just need to get alone. Be with the Savior. Do it today. You'll never regret it because it's for all of eternity. Father in heaven, we pray your blessing upon your word. We thank you, Father, for the power that you have to heal from all physical infirmity, sickness, illness. But Lord, we praise you, O God, for the power that there is in the Lord Jesus Christ to cleanse from all sin so that we can sing it is well, it is well with my soul. May that be the experience of us all today. Lord, if there's any who is yet, no, they're not saved. It's not well with their soul. But this will be the day when they will call upon you and experience your wonderful salvation. Part us with your blessing. Take us, our Father, to your locations and, and safety for those of us who go for the picnic. Bless our time of fellowship together there. And we give you thanks for your goodness again, for all the food provided. And thanking you, Father, for the fellowship that we can have. And we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again for coming this morning. Those joining online, can I say for those online, if you want to join us for the picnic, you're more than welcome to do so. We look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. God bless.